Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today I want to talk to you about something weird regarding Tridescantia tricolor propagation. No, it's not clickbait. It really is weird, or at least it was to me when I first noticed this. So we're going to have a quick look at Tridescantia tricolor. I'm known it as Tridescanti Tricolor Minima. I found other names of it, very, very similar plants, maybe slight, slight differences, and it's very, very difficult to come up with like a definitive name for this. Uh, the best one I've managed to come down to is Tridescantia mundula variegata tricolor. I think that's what they all really are. If anybody manages to come up with like a national register or a worldwide register of these things, please do let me know because I'm sure lots of us struggle with the identification of Tridescantia. So we're going to have a quick look at Tridescantia tricolor and talk about some of its more favorable features. And then I'm going to talk to you about what was so weird about the propagation. So this is the plant that we're talking about. This is Tredescantia tricolor minima or as I mentioned earlier some of the other names on there. It's not looking actually its absolute best. At this time of the year you do tend to get a few dying leaves on it um, but what's so great about this is the amount of differing things that you get in the foliage there. So you've got the lovely pink that you get underneath, like a lilac purpley colour. And I have to say, like describing colours isn't my forte. Uh, but you also get these various sorts of variegations. You get little white flowers, which are just like a little bonus, really. You do get some pure green velvety leaves, which I always pinch out because I don't want those to take over the pure pink leaves or cream leaves they also take off if you don't take those off we can see there's all sorts going on in there so a question occurred to me which no doubt it's occurred to lots of other people too what would happen if i took cuttings from all the different types of variegation that we've got on there what would happen what would spring up and that was the really weird thing so we're going to have a look at that in detail and see what this really weird thing is let's dive in And we are in. Okay, so we posed a question before the intro and the question was, what would happen if you took some cuttings of the different variegations from a Tredescantia tricolor? You see, we've plenty to go out there. And by the way, if you're interested in how to take Tredescantia cuttings, it's really easy. There is a video up here that tells you how to do it. And also, if you have noticed that your Tredescantia is losing its variegations and it's turning completely green or completely pink, then, or completely cream even, then there is a video up there which shows you what to do about that. But getting back to our point, our question was, what would happen if we took various cuttings from all the different variegations and grew them on separately? What would it result in? Well, what I was expecting was clones. So what is a clone? Well, I grew up thinking that a clone was an identical copy. I guess we all remember Dolly the Sheep. I thought a clone was a genetically identical copy in every way. So in other words, if you took a cutting of a Tredescantia tricolor, you would end up with another Tredescantia tricolor. So let's have a look at what actually happened. Okay, just as a quick reminder, so this is the original Tredescantia tricolor plant. So just take a careful look there at what we've got. So we've got pure green leaves here. We've got pure pink or cream leaves there. It's a bit of both and it? it's like a creamy pink. And we've got like these with the variegations on. These are the ones that I really want actually. These are the ones that I find the most attractive. And there's little flowers on some of them. Uh, we've got like various sorts of variegations or various amounts, various proportions of variegations. They're the really the, the main leaves that I'm interested in. So that's the mother plant. Okay, so first off, I took cuttings of the green leaved only plant. I stuck them in a pot separately and this is what we end up with. So this is the Tredescantia tricolor that's been propagated only from the green only leaves. Still get the same flowers, still get that purple underneath, but obviously we only get the green leaves. We don't get any variegations whatsoever. There's nothing coming from that. Again, this isn't looking its absolute best at the moment. You do find with Tredescantias, this, this sort of Tredescantia anyway, certainly this tricolor and all its various clones, you do find 
that it doesn't really do well once it gets beyond a certain point. You can see here next to it, this is a younger one, and you can see how the leaves are much glossier than they are over here. This one really is ready for a restart. And I do have a video on that as well, so I'll stick a card up for that, where you just completely chop it off and you start it from scratch, maybe even repot it. Or just take a few cuttings and start another pot off somewhere else. But yeah, this is what you get from the, the green leaf. So why'd you get this? Because if this is a clone, surely you should be getting another of the mother plant. There's a mother plant, just as a reminder. But we've got something even more weird coming right up. Okay, so we've dealt with the green only leaves. What about these lovely pinky cream leaves? What would happen if I took those as cuttings? Well, not a lot. <laughs> you might be surprised to hear, or maybe you're not surprised to hear, that none of them survive. Every time I take one of these, none of them survive. Now you might say, well, that's pretty obvious because there's no chlorophyll in them, therefore they will just die. And actually that is what happens, they just perish. Every single one I've tried, and I've tried it a dozen times, and they all just perish. So the question for me and the question for anybody out there who's a botanist or who knows about these things is why do they take over the plant when you leave them on the main mother plant? Why don't they, because they clearly aren't able to photosynthesize because there's no chlorophyll in them, why do they carry on growing like this? Because if you do leave this plant as it is, you get the green taking over and you get loads and loads of these pinky cream leaves taking over. I keep pinching them out that's the only way to maintain these lovely variegated type leaves. So that's two of the variegation types or two of the leaf types that we've talked about. So what about if I took a cutting of one of these beautiful variegated leaves? What would I end up with? Well, something even more weird. Okay, this is the result of taking some cuttings of the various variegations. It's almost like a new plant all by itself. It doesn't look anything like the mother plant, if I just put that next to it. You can see what the mother plant looks like, the Tredescantia tricolor, and this is a bunch of cuttings from the just the variegated leaves. So you'll see there that we've got some absolutely stunning variegations. You'll also notice that the leaves are considerably bigger. I'll just move that green one out of the way. Considerably bigger than they were from the mother plant. Bear in mind that this one is a lot younger than this one. This one is a couple of years old. This one is only a couple of months old. But look at those leaves. I actually prefer the cuttings. It's almost as if I've come up with a brand new plant. I know I haven't. I'm sure people have done this before, but I prefer the one on the right to the one on the left. They've both got qualities that make them really nice to have in the house or really nice to have in a warm greenhouse, but I prefer that one. So my question is, why does this happen? If these are clones, why do we not end up with this particular plant just over and over again? Well, I think I found the answer. So I did a little bit of Google hunting and I came across a 2011 study into why cloned plants are not identical. And I'll put the study up on screen. Obviously, I can't put the whole thing up there. I'll put the, a link to it in the comments if you want to go and have a read of that. And it's something to do with the genomes of the clone being high in mutations. And you can see that's clearly what's happened. We've got this beautiful plant here that's come from the variegated leaves from this plant. And we've ended up with a complete different plant and if we put those in the background together with it you can see that that one again has come up with a completely different plant so we've got two different plants from the one plant all supposedly genetically identical supposedly clones but clearly very very different and it's something to do with the the mutations in the genome in the clone now I'm not really interested in the in-depth science behind it about why it happens. The point for me is that clones do not have to be identical. So that was a learning moment for me. I didn't know that. You might have known that for years. I didn't know that. I thought a clone had to be identical. So that raises a couple of points. Certainly about 
how much confusion there is over Tredescantia. If every clone might produce a completely different plant with different characteristics, can you imagine how many variations there are? Certainly in a plant like Tredescantia, where there are already like uncountable numbers of hybrids out there and clearly loads and loads of issues with naming them it doesn't appear to be a register anywhere and everybody seems to have different names for something that seems to be the exact same plant so this might be why can you imagine how many variations there are out there if everybody just takes the odd cutting of a plant and ends up with one that looks completely different but just going back to my original Tredescantia tricolor here, the question for me now, and the question for you if you know the answer to this, is how do you actually get another Tredescantia tricolor other than buying it? It can't be from cuttings, because clearly you end up with something completely different. It can't be from seed, because hybrids very rarely come true from seed. Is it a species? Could it be a species out there? I would very much doubt it, seeing as having grown it for a while, it very quickly reverts back to either full green or the pink takeover, the pinky cream leaves takeover. So if you know the answer to this, where would you get a Tredescantia tricolor from in the first place? Put it in the comments. I would be very, very keen to find out what the answer to that question is. So I think you'll agree that's some weird stuff going on there. If you know the answer to that, I'd love to hear it. Where do we get Tredescantia tricolor from? If it's not from seeds, if it's not from clones, then where does it come from? Whatever the reason, I think you'll agree that they're both lovely plants and I'm really, really pleased I managed to come up with this wonderful clone here completely different from the mother plant and if you've got one of these i would definitely recommend taking some cuttings of them so that you too can end up with this one and i'm really quite excited to see what happens if i take some cuttings from some of the shoots on this plant what would happen you can see we've got some like more paler ones paler leaves we've got some with tons of irrigations on them some really big leaved shoots there what's gonna happen, the sky's the limit. Can't wait to give it a go. If you enjoyed this video, if you found any of it useful or even mildly entertaining, please tickle that notifications bell, tickle that thumbs up, all helps the channel. And I love to hear from people. Tell me your experiences in the comments. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.